right, I think we are live. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, we're live. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to our Facebook Live. Um, I'm Alia Moedin. For people who've been to my trainings or been to um, visited my Facebook Lives and listened to it, welcome back. Um, I'm really, I've been doing this since the start of the COVID uh, lockdown in Pakistan, and it was initially a way of keeping myself entertained and intellectually invigorated and, um, and connecting into the most amazing, amazing people from around the world. And um, today I'm really, really excited to have with me. And so actually the Facebook Live's become a thing of, of its own. And we have been having people, I think the maximum number of people in one go that actually were listening in or, or, or listened to the Facebook Live are about a thousand, which is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And we had people from all over the world, all the way from Canada, all the way to Australia and, and most places in between. So I'm excited about the people who will be logging on to this training as well, or listening to this uh, Facebook Live as well, live or the, you know, when it's on, what, uh, it's on the page. I'm really, really excited in particular today to invite my very special guest, Karen Faulkner. Karen, welcome to face my Facebook Live. Um, and I, the reason why, and I'll tell you why I said I'm really, really excited. The reason I'm really, really excited to have you as my guest is because potentially unbeknownst to you, all of this is actually because of you. Yeah. And I, and I will explain why in a moment. So let me just first um, introduce, uh, introduce Karen uh, to everybody. So Karen Faulkner, for people who may not know her, and I, there'll be many who will know her, who will be listening in. Um, Karen is the CEO of the uh, NLP, for the Association for NLP. Um, Karen is the CEO of also the NLP International Conference. Uh, she's an NLP trainer as well. And uh, um, Karen has written, is the author of the book, The NLP Professional. And I think it was first published in 2011 and um, it's going to be published again next year. And I'm um, just putting my name down for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to read this. I'm sorry, I was going to try and ad lib, but I don't trust myself. So I will read it with your permission. Karen is passionate about the consistent high quality delivery of NLP services and on helping NLP maintain and grow the respect it needs and deserves when delivered by ethical and credible NLP professionals. So Karen, very, very, very hearty welcomes to my Facebook Live. Oh, and, um, <laughs> and I want to share now what I meant by the whole, all of this is actually thanks to you. Because for me, life, my life changed when I attended the NLP conference in 2019. It was an absolute game changer in my experience of my work, in my workspace, professionally, essentially. And um, in terms of, it, it, it was multifaceted. And, and I've shared this before in my, um, you know, in, uh, in a lot of my trainings and with a lot of people. And I was, when I actually went to, just to give you a bit of background, when I first went to the NLP conference or even before that, I was feeling kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. I was, there was a lot of outgoing of doing trainings and, and coaching and all of the stuff that I was doing, but it was a very outward flow. And I felt that there was nothing coming in. I wasn't, grow I felt I wasn't growing. I wasn't learning. I wasn't, I wasn't expanding. It was just an outward flow. And I figured, you know, I needed some, I felt like I needed something. What do mm -hmm. I need that can really, you know, help me in some way to just sort of feel like I'm green and growing again. And I sort of Googled and I found your conference and I attended and I felt like, and this is the analogy that I've used, is that I was, I, when I went, I, I was on the top of my mountain and I hadn't, and I'd spent my, my career, you know, struggling up that mountain and I made a lot of effort and I got to the top. I was very proud of that. When I got to the conference, I suddenly saw that there was an entire mountain range mm -hmm. and peaks that I had had no idea existed until I was at that conference. And literally I was like this bug-eyed person, you know, and I felt like, I felt like a, a complete novice. I was in awe and I was excited. It was fantastic. 
And there's this other thing that I actually haven't shared, but I will share. And it's between you and me and pretty much everybody who's listening, um, is that I was particularly inspired by you. Really? And NLP, yes, I was. And um, NLP is all about modeling. And I remember watching you on stage, um, around the conference. And I just, I remember your calm, elegant composure that was, that was balanced perfectly with a certainty and a self-confidence. And I was just looked at her and said, when I grow up, I want to be like Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So that's why, and, and you know, and my life has, has changed in so many ways because of that conference. The contacts that I made, I've invited trainers to Pakistan. I was invited to the leadership summit because of that conference. Um, I, I felt like, and I'd been looking for a tribe. I'd been looking for people to connect with. And, I, and I'd been doing NLP for many, many years and felt that I never really had a tribe. And mm -hmm. I found that tribe with within that conference and the people there and you know and it's been it's just changed it's been a it's a sea it's been a sea change for me so thank you very very much it's and it's a pleasure oh, to have you there <laughs> have you it's, here. A good job we, it's a good job we know nlp because i'm really working on state management at the moment <laughs> that's so lovely thank you uh, so no but my thanks to you and so um you know um so we're talking about nlp and the association of nlp and I thought today we would talk about, um, in the past I've had people who are doing interesting things in terms of some expertise, you know, in some form. And I just thought it would be really interesting to talk about the, the business of NLP, you know, the associations and the benefits and how, how all that fits in. It's all very well to learn NLP, NLP, but there's more to it than just that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's where, um, you know, I suppose, my book, The NLP Professional, was, was dedicated to my dad. I, I grew up around professionals. Um, my dad was a solicitor, his dad was a solicitor. Um, and so I kind of had an awareness, even in my childhood, of, of what and how a professional looks like um, and feels like and sounds like. Um, and that kind of, when, when I first um, wanted to get involved or wanted to join the association when I first did my NLP practitioner qualification I thought you know it, it seemed a no-brainer to me that I needed to belong to the professional body for NLP um, because I wanted that sort of backup and reassurance and, um, and safety net if you like um, and I wanted my clients to have that safety net as well and to be honest I I, I kind of moved quite quickly into thinking I started using my NLP applying it to the work that I already did rather than going straight out there as an NLP practitioner I didn't feel qualified enough um, at, at that point in time you know like you were saying about yes. uh, I, was, I was I was very small in a very big field um, so it was it was much more about I wanted that professionalism um, about my practice and I was already working as, a, as an accounts trainer, as a management accountant. So I, 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 most of the work that I did was one-to-one -one training. So I ended up, you know, my accounts training became a form of coaching. Um, I learned all sorts of things about my clients that probably I didn't need to know as an accountant, um, but, but found out about because I was using language patterns and, and just being open with people and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, that was my reason for wanting to belong to a professional body and, and the ANLP did exist. Um, it didn't have, it was very, it was very broken um, at the time. And, and I kind of just put it to one side and thought, uh, well, I'll, I'll think about it later sort of thing. Um, but I just think that professionalism, that credibility, um, those sorts of things it's it's about meeting it's about meeting potential clients in their map of the world um it's not about what i want um it's about what they might want and potential clients my potential students of a trainer they might want that safety net they might want to know that actually you're not just someone who's who's set up a website and um you know stating these amazing things about how NLP is going to cure the world and, and um, 
you can be a you can become a trainer in five weeks and be earning four million pounds a month in six weeks um you know it's it's not all like that mm, exactly and 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 that's actually one of the things that concerns me a lot and and it was um a comment i think that i i heard for the first time um i'm not sure i'm not sure um well you know in this last year that i've been involved with um some amazing people in nlp is this concept of good nlp and bad nlp and in terms of the fly by night affairs uh, the and i know the world is a bit of a different place but it's it's um there are a lot of people who who might do these three-day trainings or four-day trainings or, or or whatever it's not even necessarily the the, the, the amount of time but they mm -hmm do something and they say it's nlp and, and and you know when you google it there's a lot of you know there's a lot of bad rep of nlp on the net and and i think you know one of the things that you know the associations and all are working towards is you know how do you create that for people to actually recognize and the credibility of trainers and the credibility of of the training that what they're going to get what they what they are um paying for is what they're going to get Mm. Yeah. And so, so, so what are some of the, the um, because a lot of people also um, will do a training, but then they won't necessarily sign up for an association. And I always, with an association, and I always tell my, my, my trainees that, you know, sign up with an association. It gives mm. you the credibility, but there's so much more. Like I, I regularly visit the NLP website and their resources that I use for you know, for my, my, my corporate training work or coaching or anything, you know, mm -hmm. there's so much resource there. So what, what in, your, in your mind, in your intention, um, what do you consider some of the benefits of, you know, joining an association and, and NLP in particular? Um, well, I think, the, as we've sort of already said, the benefits of belonging to an association and having that professionalism and, and backup, um, it's much easier for you as a trainer or as a professional to be able to say, I abide by this code of ethics. Um, there is a complaints process in place. If, if in the unlikely event that somebody was unhappy with an ANLP member, there's a complaints process in place. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the key things here is to understand that in most countries, NLP is not regulated. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, Yes, there are going to be those charlatans out there, those people that promise you can get rich quick, those people who promise you can be an NLP practitioner in, in three nanoseconds. Um, and those that, you know, let's, let's face it, there are online courses that don't involve any face-to-face -face training or anything like that. It's sit in front of a computer and watch three videos um, and you can call yourself a practitioner. Um, and, and what what those things don't have is any backup, any credibility, any, um, it, it's, it's sort of self-perpetuating. So it's, it's very easy for someone to say, I am an NLP trainer, or I am an NLP practitioner. It's quite another thing to say, I am an NLP practitioner and I belong to this professional body. So I abide by their code of ethics. And, and because NLP is not regulated, uh, there is no obligation for people to do that. And I think it's very um, misplaced for us to believe that it's easy to just go out there and say that person is doing NLP in, in an incorrect way or something like that. But at the moment, because NLP has no, no regulation in, any, in many countries, they're free to do their NLP um, less ethically and all that sort of thing. So it is only by signing up to one of the associations that there is that opportunity to say, I am self-regulating. I am belonging to an association which provides a framework for me to regulate my practices, um, to abide by their code of ethics. It's you know, it, there has to be that, that external verification for someone in order to be able to, to claim that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and, so, it, and there's, so it becomes a security space for the participants and also for, um, 
you know, for the trainers or the practitioners themselves. You know, it sort of because it just creates that sort of a uh, contract of of trust. Um, Absolutely, and it works both ways as well because not only is it a safety net for for your potential clients or students, it is hmm. also a safety net for you as a trainer um, for for professionals who are working because we have dealt with um, complaints in the past where actually uh, it we have an independent complaints panel that deals with that sort of thing. Very few of the complaints that um, come through to us, we can actually do anything about because the person that they're complaining about isn't a member of ANLP in the first place. So like I said, NLP is unregulated. So there's nothing we can do about someone who chooses not to belong to any association, um, which is why due diligence in advance before taking a course or before engaging with a professional is so important. Um, that said, it's those people that we have had to deal with on the rare occasion where somebody is a member, it's just as easy for us to find, or for the independent complaints panel to find, to, to protect the member as it is for them to protect the public. It is a fair and independent process um, and, and it's there for both parties to, to um, adhere to. So yeah. it is just as protective of, of the members as it is of the public. Yeah, yeah. And, and so let's just talk a little bit about the conference as well. Um, mm. One of the things that, I mean, it was uh, the, the three-day conference that was held last year, and unfortunately this year it couldn't be held because of COVID. Uh, but last year, what, what, what I found just amazing was just the breadth of an expanse of, of knowledge and expertise that was in that place. I mean, so many, I mean, it's very level four, but you know, so many PhDs and so many people, you know, um, doing such high level work. And mm -hmm. I hadn't, a lot of it, I had had no awareness of until I actually came to that conference. Wonderful. And yeah, yeah. And, and that's you know, what we aim for. We do aim for, we do aim for, um, I mean, People often say to us, um, give me a clue, what would you like a presentation on? Um, and it, it's really important for people to understand that actually the conference evolves each year, the programme evolves from the submissions that are made. Uh, so we sit there with a, a, a lot of post-it notes um, and a, a flip chart, and we write every single proposal on a, on a post-it note and we build the conference program from what we have available to us. I mean, we really are using, you know, using the resources we have. So it's not a case of, of a proposal has to fit into this stream or must look in, work in this way. It's very much, we take what we're given and we, we evolve a program out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so one of the things that I, one of the things that, the conversations we're moving forward with, and this is also part of the leadership summit and all, is the future of NLP and how, you know, how, how we're going to move forward. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of development that's taking place in, you know, mm -hmm. in NLP and how we, how we move forward with it. What are some of your thoughts on that? Um, well, I think it's, I mean, I think that that's the key thing is, is it's still an evolving subject. Um, and I know this time last year, you know, we would talk with our accreditation team and, and talk with various trainers and, and the whole idea of, of having an online training was just absolutely never going there. Um, that's it. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of, well, maybe we need to just think about this and explore this because there does need to be in, in the midst of the online trainings that happen, like I said, where you sit for three hours in front of a video, um, a pre-recorded video, that there is room for that in the market because mm. it's a really good way of introducing somebody to NLP and, and piquing their curiosity in some way. However, mm. there's a difference between that and a quality training. So mm. it's one of those things that we've been talking about for a long time and, and then suddenly um, you know, looking at every cloud has a silver lining, I guess, uh, COVID comes along and, and that accelerated very quickly the thoughts around it. And, and well, what can be done? Because 
you know, we can sit back as a, as a membership organization, as a professional body and, and just watch all our members' businesses disappear into dust. Um, so there was action required on our part to say, well, okay, how can we support our accredited trainers? How can we support our trainer members? Um, and, and that's kind of what we're about is, you know, we are here in service of you, our members. Um, so creating those virtual training criteria um, was an interesting exercise. And, and I loved the fact that the people we were working with, the same people who last year had been, yeah, not, 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 not a fan of, of online training. Um, yeah. when, when challenged to, um, to actually participate and, and, and deliver online training, there were so many benefits to it. Um, yeah. so the world of virtual training um, has, been, has been rapidly evolved. Um, and, and our responsibility was to create a set of criteria to ensure that virtual training can be can still be professional and ethical and still have standards. Um, so we worked with a group of, of master trainers and trainers to, to work out those criteria so that NLP training can now be delivered in, an, in a virtual environment. Hmm. And which is still different to... Um you know, some of the, um, you know, the sort of $15 trainings or the, like the, the three hour pre-recorded kind of stuff that's available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And intentionally very different because it is about, it is about highlighting what creates, what, what makes a good quality training. Um, and I think that's the key thing is, you know, and, and I think the fact, you know, we, we, our, our environment, our field, like so many others had to adapt fairly quickly. Mm. And they did. Um, and so just putting something in place, you know, this can still be, this is, we're still having a, a, a face to face conversation. It just happens to be that there's a screen between us, but mm. you're live, I'm live. Um, and so it is possible to still create change. It is possible to still have that interaction, that, that connection um, in a virtual environment. So Yes, there is. There is. There are now criteria for, for delivering a virtual training, um, and as as we said at the time, you know, now that genie has been let out of the bottle, it's not going to go back in again. So it's about working with it, um, yeah. and working with it to ensure that that NLP trainings remain professional, ethical within within standards and and everything like that. And that's where you know assessment is so important. Mm -hmm. um, it, really well it's impossible to assess someone who has just sat in front of a computer screen watching um watching dvds for hours um yeah. so you need to be those still those elements of observation and and um proper assessment practices that can still be done in a virtual environment yeah, yeah. One of the things that I also um, really loved about, and by the way, just so you know, I will be sort of getting onto my phone to see because there are messages and comments coming through. So I will be, um, if there are any questions or something, I'll be sharing them with your permission. So if I'm looking down, I'm not intending That's to be fine. rude. <laughs> but what I really loved about ANLP was that its lineage is 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 amazing. And you know, being at the conference, there were so many of the co-creators of NLP who are the benefactors of NLP and the well-wishers and, and supporters and, um, you know, Judith, uh, Judith Delosier and, 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 and Robert Diltz. And there's so many people once saw that, that. And to me, that was an amazing experience because I read their books. I've taught some of the stuff that they've created and to start engaging with them and interacting with them and speaking to them and, 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 and listening to them live was so inspiring. And yeah. um, I think that is really amazing about the NLP that it has, does have this really high quality lineage associated with it. I, and I just think, I think again, you know, we are just incredibly lucky um, that, that, that so many of, of the, as you say, the lineage, and, and it is, it's that balance between the, the people who've gone before us and who've walked that path um, and those who are encourage us, encouraging us to walk their path um, and to go and to follow in their footsteps. And, 
And that's why the conference is important because it is a balance between, between presenters who have been around for decades and have so much wisdom in the field and those that are new and, and they're evolving new techniques and taking their NLP and applying it in different ways and that sort of thing. And they have as much to offer. Uh, so the conference offers that platform for both, for, for new presenters, for, for new people who may not have been in the field for quite as long. And, and to have all those people in one environment is just, is just amazing. I and mean, we are so lucky. Yeah, and the energy was was absolutely one of the most one of the most vibrant energies I've experienced in a conference. I will say, um, and I've been to a few, and this was definitely not NLP necessarily, but I've been to a few conferences and you know networking um, spaces, and the the energy was just was just spectacular. So it, it's um, fantastic. Really, really and I think, again, we're just we're we're so lucky from that perspective because it it is it is that some of the parts. You know, we all come together. It's a combination of, of the presenters and the delegates and the exhibitors and the hotel that, that we're fortunate enough to find. Um, but, but that environment, you know, the environment that we find ourselves in, be it something like this or mm. in a hotel, whatever it is, it, it's, it's, we all play a part in making that work. Um, and that's what's so fantastic about the conference is everything pulls together and, and we, we're really just there. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a huge amount of hard work. It is a huge amount of hard work. And we're still there as the facilitators, as the supporters. It's, it's ANLP's leadership model is, is an upside down triangle. It's not about we're at the top telling everybody what to do. It's about we're at the base um, supporting. So we support the trainers to support the professionals who support the people who, who go out there and make a difference in society. So that's the same as what we do with the conference. We are there just to support and facilitate what happens. And, and it's, it's the combination, the magic happens because of the combination of people who find themselves in the same space. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and people from everywhere. I mean, I met so many people from so many different countries. It was very, very exciting. And it's interesting that you say about, you know, the, the, the um, the years of experience that so many people have that they bring with them and um mm. before, before the training uh before sorry before the conference i'd be like oh, yes you know i've got 10 years experience and, you know be kind of you know and, and standing in my personal power of you know yes i've got that and then mm. it's meeting everybody oh yeah i've got 20 i've got 30 i've got 40 i'm like okay you know <laughs> literally i felt like a novice because there were so many people with so many years of experience but at the same time the level of generosity in an interest in each other mm. there was you know like often you will go to professional conferences and there's a little bit of professional um uh, um not jealousy but that sense of one-upmanship mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't find that at all. And it was very much whether you, wherever you were coming from, wherever, whichever sort of platform of experience you were coming from, there was this give and take of, of you know, everyone wanted to know about you and, you know, you wanted to know about everybody else. And that was, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. It's probably because of our values and ethics as well. You know, we, I mean, we're the same with the association. We, we very much feel that what we do for one, we have to be able to do for all. So we don't create any sense of hierarchy or anything like that from that perspective. Um, you know, and I mean, with everything that we do, I roll my sleeves up the same as everybody else. You know, just because I happen to have the title CEO, it doesn't mean to say that I don't send emails and, and, and clean the desk and make my own tea and that sort of thing. It, it all happens. Um, and I think that's because we are all equal. Um, and that's that's very much my belief is that, you know, what we do for one, we have to be able to do for all. And we are all equal as human beings. Um, and that's kind of what it boils down to. And, and, and yes, there is a hierarchy in, in NLP from from someone who's starting out to someone who's been in NLP for 40 years. And, and I, I love the fact that, you know, you said that you've been in NLP for 10 years and, and felt like a novice. And I'm thinking, and I wonder how many people at the conference have, have been in NLP for 10 minutes and we're thinking oh my goodness so, you know it's it's that and, and that's that is what I think is so magical about the conference because actually it doesn't matter whether you've been in NLP for 10 minutes or, or 30 years 
that's the purpose of the conference is that it brings it, it connects those people together mm -hmm. that's true and you know there, there's some uh, there's one woman in particular i can't even remember her name but she and i sat together um at the conference on day one um and we and then we were doing our own thing and sometimes we'd be in the same in the same workshop and um and then we sit together again and we really we clicked really well and i and i've forgotten her name but oh. I'm really looking forward to seeing her when I when, at the next conference. And and one of the things that I noticed when I first arrived at the conference, and I was um, you know didn't know anybody. I think I was the only person there from Pakistan. And I, um, uh, <laughs> I was yeah. And um, uh, I didn't know I didn't know a soul. It is one of the most brave things I did. And. Um, and I saw people meeting and hugging, and I was sitting in the, you know, in that cafeteria, in that uh, restaurant, and was watching people hugging and meeting, and people seemed to know each other. And and I was like, you know, one day I want that for me. And and I'm an NLP taught me goal setting, intention. Mm -hmm. And when I go back to the next conference, and I'm going to be asking you, you know, moving forward, you know, I know things have, you know, we weren't able to have the conference this year, but. Now there are people that I can hug when I go to the conference next time because I know that many people now with a, with a familiarity, um, which is which is lovely. Mm -hmm. So you know, and, and, and part, again, of that, part of that builds as well because I mean we were very lucky the first year that we took over the conference. Um, we came across. Oh, right. and, when, when did you what? take over? When did you take over the conference? Our, our first conference was, um, we were uh, granted custodianship of the conference in 2016. Um, and our first conference was 2017, uh, right. in the end of April 2017. And then we moved it to May um, for 2018, 2019. Um, and, and one of the things that enables people to, um, to build those relationships is actually our conference app, which was in its infancy in the first year. Um, it, it's called Hoover, um, which is a, strange name but it, it seems to work um, and they were they were just starting out themselves and we were looking for a we were looking for something where we could connect people and people could continue those conversations because three days in a bubble is lovely um, and it's about continuing those conversations afterwards you know and, and making a connection with that person whose name you've forgotten um, and, and because yes that is and, and especially last year we noticed on the conference app that because we we opened it up a bit earlier than usual so um there was sort of a good two weeks before the conference where people started engaging through the app and it was just amazing to see the number of people who had connected and talked and set up discussion groups and and that you can set up within the conference app, you can set up virtual meeting rooms to have a chat. So there were people and, and, and discussion boards so that people could, um, you know, who's interested in, in using NLP with dogs? Um, that there were, you can set up a, conf a conference discussion about it. And then actually coming together and meeting those people was, um, you know, was, was brilliant. Um, but the app was, was very key, I think, in keeping those connections and certainly after the event, because the app stays live for six months after the event as well. It was very key in making that, in, in ensuring that those people stay connected. Um, mm. They have the opportunity within the app to swap details and link themselves together and then carry on those conversations outside of um, those three days of the conference bubble. Yeah, yeah. Now there are some questions coming through, so I will um, I will just uh, have a quick look. Um, Ali is asking, how do you think NLP could evolve going forward? I know we've talked a bit about this already, but in just I'll in terms, you know, the, the future and yeah. I'll just polish my crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> my idea, I would like to see NLP evolving. Um, to become one of the mainstream solutions for, for any particular challenge that someone has. And I think we've still got a way to go with that uh, in terms of, you know, we think, so say somebody is thinking about um, losing weight. They may mm. not necessarily think of NLP. They may think about dietary books. They may think about apps. They may think about joining Weight Watchers. Um, and I would like to get to the stage where they also think about NLP uh, for that and many other situations. 
And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we, we continue to encourage our members to provide us with case studies and narrative evidence and things like that, because it's about building, building those stories. It's about, again, this, the same as with the complaints panel and everything like that. It's about meeting people in their map of the world. So yeah. for them to start using NLP as one of their potential go-to solutions, they have mm -hmm. to understand how it's going to work for their particular challenge in that particular moment. So the case studies, the stories, those sorts of things are so powerful because it, you know, if, if you're looking for someone, um, say for example, um, you're looking for someone to, to fix your bifold doors, you're going to go onto Google and, and, and Google bifold door specialist. You're mm. not going to Google builder. Mm. It's looking for that specialist for the, for the job that, that you want sorted. So mm. I think it's really key that, that we have narrative evidence, we have stories that demonstrate how NLP can be applied in so many different scenarios, because that's how people then start understanding, oh, I've got a phobia about pigeons. Um, mm. So this person, look how it changed their life. I mm. can relate to that. I mm. can associate with that. I want some of that. Mm. 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 So I think, and, and that's a that's a huge goal to have is that you know having that's that's our main um vision as an association is to have nlp recognized as a mainstream solution yes yes and what i'm uh, you know and what's interesting about nlp and, and and i share this in my trainings as well is that nlp in a way is also a uh, a um a sort of industry free uh, science, if you like, you know, it's not necessarily just therapy. It's 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 a set of tools, techniques, um, mm -hmm. processes, way of thinking, etc., that you can actually apply to any area. And so, yes, it's uh, it's the in the forefront often sits therapy related spaces, mm -hmm. but NLP can be applied to business, to leadership, and there are there's an expanse of it's 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 literally one of those. Uh, modalities that can be attached to anything else to make it bigger and better and to we pad have, it out. Um, we have a, a model on our website, the applications of NLP, and it's a four quadrant model. Um, and one of those quadrants is the therapeutic clinical side of things. Um, we also, there's also um, educational uh, development, personal development, and organizational development where NLP can be used as sort of two, the, the four big quadrants. Um, yeah. And that's where, you know, and, for, and to apply NLP in any one of those other three quadrants, you know, NLP applied in a clinical setting um, or in a therapeutic setting, obviously mm. there are really, really, really stringent measures required, really strict criteria. Um, it, it, that's the area where there's a call for um, clinical trials and, and double bind testing and, and things like that. Absolutely, because it's being used responsibly in clinical settings. However, mm. in the other three quadrants, educational settings, organizational settings, and, and personal development, there doesn't necessarily have to be that same stringent criteria applied. Um, mm. You know, you don't necessarily, if, if you, you know, you, you use NLP in a business context quite a lot. Um, mm. And I doubt very much if you've ever questioned a model that you've been presented with in a business setting. It's a mm. model. It's mm. worked for these 20 businesses in the past so try it and see if it works and if it works for you too great uh, and that's so so and, and given that NLP is all about modeling excellence there are plenty of models that we can offer in an organizational setting and things like that that don't have to necessarily be be researched to the hilt they're models that have worked for other businesses been effective so, yeah exactly yeah. they work yeah and then also it was interesting, you know, is what all the innovations that are coming out. And that's what I find so, so deeply exciting in, in terms of, um, you know, there's the lightning process and, um, you know, Dr. Phil Parker, and in fact, he's been one of my guests. So, you know, the lightning process is, has uses a lot of NLP, the RTM method that's coming out, which is, is a new innovation. Um, Dr. Lisa DeRake was, has also been a guest and she's been a part of, uh, involved in that. And, and these are, Amazing. In fact, I think the the, the lightning process has actually been uh, um, the NHS has 
has researched it or, you know, they've definitely got some information out there. And I've definitely, I've moved people to, you know, with, with certain issues say, you know, have a look at it and, you know, and, yeah. and so there's, there is so much, yeah, there's so much innovation. And, and I really feel that NLP is something that is, is very much in its growth phase. You know, oh, it's, 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 it's been coming along and now it's over here where it's literally taking off because and that the, the, the quality of, the, of, of people involved and, and, and how they're marrying it with different things and, and attaching it to their PhDs in different forms or doing different things with it. It's, it's so inspiring. And, mm -hmm. you know, even in terms of, you know, I think this is the Robert Dilts method maybe, but, you know, it's a, the, 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 uh, gener the first generation of NLP, the second generation, third generation, or the fourth generation of NLP, yeah. you know, there are all of these roots and it's this um, beehive of, of humming activity, which I think is, is really, really exciting. Absolutely. And I love that NLP is a platform for so many of these things. And I think the important thing is that, is that NLP... It's, it's really important to still acknowledge NLP as being a part of it or being a base of it, which, as you say, you know, Phil does, the RTM process does, M-braining, that's another one. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Grant, God rest his soul, you know, recognised NLP in his book, in the book that he wrote with Marvin. Um, and and recognising that as a, as a, you know, NLP is a foundation stone to so many things that are evolving from it. Um, and I think that's where it's really important because I know, as you said, you know, we, we touched on it at the beginning about NLP doesn't always have a good reputation. There are areas where NLP has a less good reputation. And if we focus on those less good areas and we, you know, people do distance themselves, try to distance themselves from NLP by calling it something else, then, then, NLP will never get a better reputation because all those people who are doing fantastic things with it have relabeled it. Um, mm. So I think it's so, so important and because, you know, you, you've trained as an NLP trainer. I've trained as an NLP trainer. Um, mm. and, and I want that certificate to have value. Mm. Um, and it only has value if you continue to mm. acknowledge that NLP mm. exists. Yeah. And, and I actually think it's not actually about NLP at all. It is any tool can be manipulated and be um, not to, to over dramatize it, but be the, the be a force of, 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 of good or evil, depending on who's using it. You know, and absolutely. There are, there are um, less scrupulous lawyers, doctors and, um, and all sorts every of in every profession. There are less scrupulous um, practitioners of that profession. Um, mm. So, it's acknowledging that and and again that comes full circle around to the professional bodies and everything like that and, and even you know okay as doctors um they have to belong to a medical association uh and it's still there are still rogue doctors out there who eventually get caught out um and then get put in prison or certainly expelled from the professional association and aren't allowed to practice and that sort of thing and those are in regulated professions but there's mm. nothing stopping you know NLP we, we've done the same we've asked um, members to leave in the past um, as a result of of unethical practices or something like that it's it's you know it is important um, and that's it's it's duty bound on all of us to to grow the profession in an ethical professional responsible way and that's mm. what we learn on day one of a practitioner course is about taking 100 percent responsibility <laughs> Yeah, being completely above the line. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, um, um, uh, Phil says, hello, uh, hi, Karen and Alia. So that's kind of nice. And, and Rev, uh, Rev Veal says, hi, uh, from Embit. Um, yes, and Rev, that's right, I apologize, Rev, yeah, and Embit. Um, yeah, these are all these amazing innovations that are, that are coming out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just gonna have a quick look to see if um, there are any more questions and people want to engage in the conversation. Mariana says tons of love from Greece. And that's another interesting thing because I think NLP Greece was planning to have a, um, uh, a medical, if I remember correctly, and maybe Mariana can help me here or Alex can help me here, uh, like NLP and the medical um, and, and medicine. So marrying that NLP and medicine and how it can be used. And there's going to be a whole conference on it in, in, in Greece, uh -huh. I think, um, this year, yeah. which unfortunately 
I don't there are some good books out there already and some studies where um, some research studies where NLP has been successfully utilized with um, various aspects in the medical profession. Um, I'm fairly confident there's a book on the shelf somewhere that I won't be able to find now this minute. Um, but the, yeah, there's, a, there's um, Suzanne Henwood and Jim Lister. They wrote a really good book on um, applying NLP in the medical profession. Um, and the same, there's some really good books about NLP and education as well. You know, Richard Churches has done a huge amount of work uh, um, for NLP in the education sector. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So, so um, just sort of beginning to wrap it all up, um, uh, you know, how are we moving forward in terms of the conference? Like one of my, oops, one of my big goals is that for future conferences, I'm not going to be the only um, Pakistani, that's my goal. Um, and I've been encouraging all my train uh, in my trainings that, you know, come to the conference. It's, it makes a big difference when you're engaging in that community and you're, you know, it, it helps develop you so much more when you are having those types of conversations. Yes. Um, so, Absolutely. you know, forward. There, we, are, um, we are launching uh, the 2021 conference on Friday. Um, so uh, do keep your ears, eyes and, and everything else open for that. Uh, there will be some changes, uh, some yeah. major changes um, for next year's conference, which I, I think will quite possibly um, definitely support your, um, your colleagues in Pakistan um, mm. to be able to attend. So uh, do look out for the uh, launch on Friday morning, 24th. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Now I've got a few questions running in. Um, one of them is, uh, what role do you see NLP, ANLP playing in the future of NLP with the new, with the new normal? And we've already spoken about this, but if you want to maybe say a few words. Um, well, I think, yes, we, we have already covered that in terms of, you know, we, we very quickly worked with a group of trainers to, um, to develop some criteria for uh, virtual trainings, very different to an online training, a virtual training that can still be live. Um, so that, uh, and, and the new normal, I mean, we also, we put a huge amount of resources, our members were fantastic when this all sort of kicked off. Um, we very quickly put together our um, COVID-19 support hub, um, which has a range of resources. It's got a separate section on the website. Um, members put together some brilliant short videos. Um, it was, they were basically originally aimed at, um, at support workers and key workers and that sort of thing. You know, those people who, who just had five minutes to, to, to spare um, and who really needed some support for themselves with everything that was going on. And of course, that, that sort of grew further because as this went on, there's been all sorts of people who've had challenges coping with being at home on their own and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So we have the COVID-19 support hub which is a combination of short, snappy videos that people can literally just watch when they've got five or 10 minutes spare and, and introduce them to a, a tiny little aspect of NLP and how it might help with current challenges. There was also our support hub, which um, members jumped onto straight away and offering uh, complimentary uh, coaching sessions and things like that for complimentary resources for key workers. Uh, and those things are still available on the website. And, and as, we, as we come out of COVID-19 and, and continue to evolve into the new normal, it's created so many ideas in terms of, well, actually, these are, these are not just resources for COVID-19. These are resources to develop and to continue developing for the public, for people to take advantage of um, and, and give them a, a tiny little taste of what NLP has to offer. So those will continue to evolve um, long after COVID-19 has hopefully disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because um, it, it, I think online is going to be the new normal in some way, but I also do believe, you know, we, 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 are, we are social animals. We need the human okay. interaction. And we will be going back to live trainings, physical live trainings. Um, in fact, we are planning to have our own starting at the end of the year and, you know, been discussing how we can do it safely and, so what are the logistics that need to be involved to be able to do it? So we're planning, uh, and there is actually a question just to plug it, that somebody mm -hmm. asked, I want to do NLP trainings in Pakistan, um, Karachi. You can get in touch with us, <laughs> me. <laughs> but yeah, in, and, and that's the thing. But what, what uh, COVID did for me as well was figure out how to, how to pivot. 
And yes. uh, for me, it was creating those pivot, uh, the, those pivot points on, on creating smaller, I haven't actually gone the, 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 you know, the full thing of doing an NLP online training, but creating smaller programs you know, in, mm. in various things and stuff to give the taste for NLP, but then also to just standalone trainings that can be, you know, replicated by, by, by people. So there's, people there's a lot of that. possibility. Sorry. Yeah, they do the same with their practice groups, you know, suddenly practice groups were online um, and, and they work, they work equally well online. And, and, and what pivoted from that was that where we've, we've always supported practice groups um, mm. and where somebody was saying, oh, I'd like to set up a new practice group, um, but I've never actually been to one before because there aren't any in my area. We were able to say, well, great, because at the moment they're all virtual. So, yeah. um, so join someone else's and, and see how it works. And then you'll be, more prepared for when we do get, I mean, it's because there are so many things, you know, we, we've been doing our regional forums that have been knocked on the head this year and didn't happen. We ended up doing one of those virtually. Um, mm. But yes, I mean, there, there will be a new normal that involves people still getting together um, because it doesn't really matter how many things we do. We haven't yet worked out how to hug. Um, yes. so, yeah. you know, we can do virtual hugs, but they are not the same. <laughs> They are not when the same at all. No. You at the 2019 conference with a hug. <laughs> that those things can't yeah. be replaced. That's right. That's right. And 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 hopefully looking forward to future hugs, uh, real hugs at the NLP conference as well, or the international NLP conference as well in the in the future. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Um, just some few last words. Um, uh, they're you know, asking about the conferences which you've talked about. Um, so. Um, is the conference also going to be virtual from uh, now onwards as COVID is not going anywhere is a question from somebody. And that's the thing, you know, parts of it may be virtual or not, I'm not really sure. But I think you said from from, 20, from Friday. From Friday, from Friday that we'll, be, um, we'll be releasing the new website and everything will be explained. And then, it, you know, what we might do um, after that is, is take other opportunities to do Facebook Lives and answer questions that come up um, you know, in various ways, uh, that, because I think at the moment that's one of the things you, you say it's pivot points, but it's also it's also starting to be much more comfortable with the unknown. Um, yeah. And I think that's where we've had to adapt is become more comfortable with the unknown and just and just just making the decisions we can make to mitigate circumstances and allowing the rest to unfold in good time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. And in, in fact, it's 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 as you said. You know, your conference is built around the content rather than content is fit into the conference. And, mm -hmm. and the same thing goes with now. It's like, you know, the, it, the conference and the reality and, and the dynamics of it adjust to whatever the current reality is mm -hmm. or what are the current, you know, the situations. There's, um, um, my apologies if I um, don't pronounce the name correctly, Tabiso. Uh, maybe to be so from so he's saying lots of love uh, to you Ali and Karen from South Africa so it's really lovely that there are people also watching from South Africa and Red Veal. Uh, to, be so, to be so like you is another one of those just amazing stories that's come that comes out of the conference that he set himself a goal that he was going to attend the conference and and lo and behold he did. Yeah, <laughs> and made four hundred friends just like that. Wow, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Actually, I, I met him at the conference as well. We had a. I, I, think we had a I know Tobiso is listening. You cannot not meet Tobiso. <laughs> Tobiso is a force of nature who is just. Oh really? Awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, Karen, thank you so much. Um, there are more questions coming through. Um, and they will continue to be coming through and maybe, you know, we can, you can visit the, uh, it's going to be on our Facebook page for a while. And okay. if there are questions, we can, you know, continue to, to answer them moving forward because there will I be will, people. I will ask Ashen, Ashen Shannon to help me with the social media because I don't actually do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's limiting belief. That's what I had have in, in certain, yeah, for me. I yeah, choose to not belief. do social media. I like <laughs> not doing social media. <laughs> <laughs> but I will make an exception to answer the questions. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, yeah, I think, I think we've, we've done really well. So Karen, thank you so much for coming on my Facebook Live Conversations. It's fantastic to connect, connect with you. 
and um you, i really yeah. appreciate it thank you uh, my pleasure and looking forward to seeing you at the next conference and um you know being engaged with it in whatever form the conference takes i'm looking forward to being being very much an active part of it so absolutely and you're you're an active member as well so we love yeah. interacting with you thank you earlier yeah, my pleasure all right take care thank you bye bye